The start of the Canadian Grand Prix weekend had been dominated by the ongoing battle that Formula One teams are facing with porpoising. In the wake of an especially brutal Baku race for a number of drivers, with Lewis Hamilton's back pain highlighting the battering that some are facing right now, intervention by the FIA in trying to eradicate the problem has added a fresh dimension to the debate. In a technical directive sent on Thursday to teams by the FIA's single-seater technical director Nicholas Tombassis, the governing body laid out its plans to fix porpoising and bouncing in a bid to try and help drivers. And although F1's technical directives are never officially published, here's how the FIA explained its plan to teams for both the immediate, short and long-term future. Number 1. Immediate Car Changes one of the main difficulties teams have faced in curing porpoising has been trying to maintain a stable aero platform as downforce levels increase on the straights. Matters have been complicated by some teams suffering from the floor edges flexing down as speeds go up, which leads to an increase in downforce levels. This in theory sounds great, but the reality is the increased downforce accelerates the extent to which the car is pushed down onto the track, so therefore it makes the porpoising worse. It was this issue that prompted the pre-season decision to allow teams to run a single floor stay to help strengthen the edges and limit the flexing. From the Canadian Grand Prix, the FIA will allow two further measures to help teams make their floors stronger. They will be allowed an additional stay mounted further forwards of the one already adopted. Furthermore, teams will be allowed an additional thickness on the floor's top surface, even if this breaks local regulations on curvature, or if it protrudes beyond the volumes defined in the regulations. If these changes do deliver a tangible benefit in helping address the porpoising, then the FIA will then propose a formal rule change that can be voted on by teams for approval by the World Motorsport Council. Number 2. The Bouncing Metric One of the things that the FIA wants to gather is whether a car can be determined to exhibit excessive vertical accelerations as it bounces. This will be analysed first through both closer inspection of the patterns of the plank and skid wear on the cars, as well as the ways that some teams are reducing the wear of their skids. The FIA is also hoping to pull together what has been referred to as an aerodynamic oscillation metric, AOM, which will help it determine if the cars are porpoising too much. This will be determined through analysis of a sensor already fitted to the cars near its centre of gravity to help measure vertical acceleration with the hope that an AOM figure can be agreed to set a maximum limit. If this can be achieved over the next few races, then teams will be asked to calculate their own AOM over three consecutive laps in Saturday morning's final free practice session while not using DRS. Any laps not done at racing speed or following other cars will be discarded. With this figure in play, teams will have to stick with their ride height values, vertical stiffness and aero configuration for the rest of the weekend. The only exceptions to this will be raising the car up if the weather changes, adjustments for cooling, tyre pressure changes or the adjustment of the front wing flap angle. If a team cannot deliver a setup that meets the AOM figure, they will be requested to produce a setup sheet with the lowest AOM it can and raise the static ride height by 10mm. The penalty for not complying with the AOM number is clear. The FIA has warned teams that if cars bounce too much and go beyond limits laid down, then they will risk disqualification from an event. This would be done until Article 1.3 of the 2022 Technical Regulations, which relates to dangerous construction. The rule states that stewards may exclude a vehicle whose construction is deemed to be dangerous. Should teams agree on the procedures for determining an AOM value, which many within the paddock are sceptical of, then the FAA could try to deliver a metric for when the car is running on track. Number 3. Longer Term Changes whether or not sorting the AOM is a success or proves unworkable, the FIA is determined to produce better rules for 2023 and beyond that eradicates the porpoising problem. It wants teams to support this push in CFD by testing potential modifications to the cars to help reduce the propensity for the current generation of the cars to bounce. As options that could be looked at, Tom Bass's wrote, geometries that will be investigated could include raising the floor edges, the reduction of the floor platform, the elimination of the front edge wing, etc. We are also open to the possibility of allowing further stiffening of the floor via an additional stay, should this be deemed beneficial. Talks are planned with the technical directors with a view to starting the process for changes to come for next year. Let's hope that F1 doesn't need those longer term changes as the constant porpoising chit chat is becoming a touch boring, but we'll have to wait and see what effect the immediate changes take at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, and which teams it will affect the most.